So the, the thing I like about going to Alden at night at 4 a.m. in the morning, 2 a.m. to watch a movie, is that when it's nighttime, I get to experience um, the world being kind of uh, emptied. And when the world is empty and filled with a lot less people, it makes it gives it provides the impression of when I watch a film sometimes of receiving the, um, the, the signals, the impressions, the, the magic of the film more clearly at nighttime when there's less distractions around. It allows me to spend time in solitude while still being around other people, which kind of gives the viewing experience a an enhanced, um, dreamy sense of reality. I like watching movies more than I like watching television series because sometimes the television series, I think, I feel like te television series are now cr created to be consumed um, in, a, in an addictive pace, whereas films, you can at least break them apart in 90-minute, two-hour segments. And how they are connected, I think, through the, through the experience of a cinephile, is that they are, like, to me, um, islands in the great, vast oceans. And every film, regardless of quality, is like experiencing uh, an archipelago, a chain of islands that seem separate, but they're all connected in some way through the, fabric, through, the, through the fabric of film, of cinema, of movies. And today I'm creating this video log partly because I was bored and also um, I haven't really edited any videos recently because I've been busy. But uh, I found it to be significant because, well, uh, it has actually been quite a while since the film really uh, took me somewhere. Brian Eno once said, music critics should list their top five uh, selections before starting reviews so that the reader can uh, assess their biases and or, or at least the context of the reviews the emotional perspective of the reviewer i go through phases the last couple days of the last week at least i've been watching a lot of garbage and i do that a lot actually um it's kind of sadistic to do it to myself there's a phase in my life where i just watched criterion collection films and it actually left me with a pretty uh, depressed view of my chances of making good work because watching masterpiece after masterpiece kind of uh, did, it made me lose my motivation by comparison but watching sometimes watching dreck or commercial film well commercial dreck you can, you can juxtapose those two terms as well sometimes gives me hope and um, even within the context of uh, commercial films, there's a lot of good art being made. Most films are not perfect, that's for sure. And I think to be a cinephile is to, to, to really understand that, especially this day and age when there are so many movies being made and the, uh, the margin for, for, for artistic risk is very, is very small. In the last week, I've watched um, all three Punisher movies. The third one was just, as Roger Ebert put it, uh, repulsive, the Punisher Warzone film from 2008, going down the completely opposite spectrum uh, today to watch something completely embracing the, uh, a director's artistic, non-commercial... Uh, a film called Song to Song by Terrence Malick. And I'm not, I am by no means an expert. Malick was uh, a director that burst onto the scene in the 70s. I think his debut was a film called Badlands with Mart Martin Sheen and Sissy Spacek playing uh, characters based on a, a real-life story of uh, two, teen two teenagers, I think, in the Nevada Badlands. Um, it's dreamy pace, it's beautiful lighting, the, act the actors and actress, um, the actor and actress really having a strange sort of innocent uh, quality. There, it's no wonder that that film, which I've only seen once, uh, is, as they say, a masterpiece, right? He, Terrence Malick, collaborated with uh, cinematographers that really um, uh, covered the, uh, the magic hour, uh, as it's called, where the sun sets at a, at a certain time of the day and gives everything a, a, everything in view a, a golden a hue. And um, I think after the, I'm doing all this by memory, the first two films, Malik became a recluse. He never made any film again, so there was always this mystery surrounding him. And um, in the mid-90s, he came back with a film called uh, The Thin Red Line. And I remember when it came out, there was almost this um, uh, unbridled euphoric excitement of a return of a master in the, in the industry. And uh, the film that came out um, is now considered a classic, even though Already, by then, it, um, it kind of, uh, his, his directing style and his editing style challenges the viewer, and everything that he's come to be known, um, his style has become, everything that his style has become hated for is already apparent in, in that film. Uh, like an, a completely, well, well, at the time, well, yeah, non-linear, uh, majestic, the beautiful views of, of, of nature and, and, and man within it, um, uh, not enough structure. And I've watched a few films since then, a few, two in the theater. I watched A New World, uh, the movie with Christian Bale, about the, 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 the retelling of the Pocahontas story and uh, Tree of Life with uh, Brad Pitt and Sean Penn and Jessica Chastain. And each of those three films progressively um, got worse <laughs> until Tree of Life, which to me was this incredibly pretentiously cosmic, beautiful but pretentious as fuck <laughs> film uh, that really was just best used to, for um, overlaying Alan Watts' lectures about existence. So when I saw, when I knew like a week ago or a week and a half ago that I was, was going to submerge myself in true cinematic filth, I was at the, li the public library and I saw this randomly this this this, uh, this DVD case that caught my eye, song to song, and I read the back and I, I saw that it was directed by Malik and I just knew that there was a slight opening for me to, to just hold on to this film and to, to 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 digest it when I was ready in the right time. And this is how I watch movies actually. I, I had it in my room for about a week and a half, and in that time I watched all these Punisher movies that just punished me, <laughs> punished punished. I mean, the only great, the only good thing worthy of the, the repulsive wars, uh, Punisher Warzone film was how uh, repulsive the, the the film was. It was. That film was like watching um, Batman Forever and the Seven have a baby. <laughs> Uh, it was grotesque and violent and misogynist and everything. But it's not even misogynist, it, was just, it just hated humanity, you know, but it's Punisher, what do you expect? Um, so I was traumatized, had a little bit of PTSD, 
And I, thank God I read the Roger Ebert review for watching that, that one because I was expecting it, but I, didn't, I had to look away a couple times and I had to distract myself. Oh, and besides that, as icing on the cake, I decided to put in um, Hacksaw Ridge, <laughs> that Mel Gibson war film. And uh, that was based on a true story that too was filled with blood and guts and, and grotesque butchery, Hollywood suffering. And, and reading the um, reviews by Matt Zoller, who is now my, my favorite movie reviewer, it was really, was really good. So you had, I had all that for this week and I'm just like, God damn, you know, I need to get out of this. And uh, thank God I, for the last couple days I had um, some good human interaction to counter the, uh, the pummeling. And uh, so today, um, after a particularly, particu particularly good interaction, by a fireplace with some friends and marshmallows and connection, and after a good uh, writing, um, creative writing uh, sprint, I had this this, song, this this video in my bag, and I decided, you know, I'm filled with coffee. It's 1 a.m., and this might be the time to watch this film. There might be no better time to to watch this, so I put it in, and um, I will start with the bad first. There is totally a good reason for anyone to have watched this film to have walked out the way, um, according to the, the trivia, 15 movie critics walked out um, in its first screening in L.A., and um, it's a it's, it's it's a long film. It's it's more than two hours, and uh, the worst of the worst is there too. It goes on way too long. Uh, it does not have a formal structure. It is. Uh, it could be taken completely as condescending. It's, it's voiceover work. There's, there's no script. It's just image after image and uh, 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 endless, an endless hour of these beautiful actors and actresses looking into each other's eyes and feeling each other out in a pretentious way. And I would completely understand any regular regular movie viewer on most days of the week to completely want to walk out as well. But after count, uh, but in using this film to counter the, the drudgery of what I've seen before and combined with the the place I'm at now, and knowing that the summer movie season is about to be commenced with the Avengers coming up and uh, the Star Wars movie, knowing I'm going to see a lot of commercial products by the numbers with React uh, narrative structures. To watch the first hour of this film uh, brought me to a tremendously unexpected um, state of bliss, really, knowing that it could, it couldn't, probably wouldn't last, and it didn't. The film deserves to be cut completely in half. With the second, it's, it's almost as if, um, see, this is the thing, the thing about this film, though, uh, it was as if it took every good experience of a, of a drug high with every bad experience of a coming down, of a come down from such a high, and completely put it together with the high at the beginning and the come down on the, on the second half. But the beginning uh, was so wonderful because it, it's completely non-commercial structure, because of its completely non-commercial structure and it's breathtaking photography, uh, cinematography. Malik has been known for making his images and with, with his um, director of photography people, and god damn, the framing of this film, even though, as, even though it was cut in this in, in sort of rapid way of, of uh, experience, was so beautiful. It was as if every uh, frame in this film was touched by a celestial be being. And um, what I want to really focus on is that first one, the first 50 minutes of this film that unfolded as the, the, the title of the film um, promises, song to song. So I already was ready for the sort of poetic, and of course being aware of the style, the sort of unbridled poetic uh, domino of images and sensation. And for the first 50 minutes before it, it, it lost its way, there was this beautiful, um, incredible rush of scene after scene. I mean, the exact thing that I hated about Tree of Life, his scene in Tree of Life, I loved in that first 50 minutes because it was like, it, this, what I'm going to say without missing words, this film, the first 50 minutes before you cut it off, you cut off the viewer could easily be viewed while on drugs. It was like watching a film on drugs. And as I was watching the scenes progress, I think anyone who's ever experienced either getting really high or um, losing themselves in uh, hallucinogens could relate to the way scenes um, of that took place in completely different randomized settings, almost, I, I don't know if it was by accident or because of his poetic editing, he um, accidentally stumbled upon the effect of losing time and reality uh, while on, on drugs. And while watching this in Alden Library, while being completely sober, though high on caffeine and uh, the 1 a.m. hour, and being surrounded by only the, the few people that were up in this sort of beautiful shared solitary, uh, it was so wonderful. And to me, it was like watching as if uh, angels or aliens had come down to take the consciousness of a person who, has, who had died and was picking through these random memories uh, of this person. The first 50 minutes worked like that. And to see these images of, this, of the, um, these, the music festivals of the Austin music scene with these actors, these beautiful actors, Ryan Gosling, Michael Fassbender, uh, Rooney Mara, and um, Natalie Portman. Of course, they're just beautiful people. And I just, expecting all these faults already, it was wonderful to just expect it and to be surprised and to see these, these beautiful people acting as quite literally, literally um, beautiful ciphers uh, or just uh, magnets of GPS points walking through this, this reality that, because of his, uh, his lenses, was capturing in uh, almost a, a strange documentary beat that reminded me of um, uh, the Philip Glass uh, scored documentaries uh, that went all over the, over the world or, or the movie Baraka.